one of the things I would also point out, and the students usually are struck by, are the demon-like figures of food adulteration, graft, white slavery, um, bribery, that these are the evils that plague our society at the moment. These are the things that threaten the nation. They threaten industrial production. That these are key, important issues. But if you look closely at what they are, they're also a lot about two things, political corruption. So the idea also is that women might uh, be more moral because they come from a sphere that is imagined as uncompromised by capitalism. And so they can come in with not only fresh eyes and a fresh perspective, but they are also trading on a kind of conventional idea that has grown in the minds of many for the past century that women bring a moral sensibility. So they wouldn't stand for corruption and bribery. Um, and white slavery is kind of thrown in there. And that might be something that you might also talk to students about. It might take you a little bit off topic, but I, this is how I would keep it on topic is that white slavery is the notion that women, white women, rather than black people, the whiteness there is very uh, key, um, are being taken across state lines, are being forced into prostitution, uh, being forced into sex slavery. And again, this is, is imagined as a woman's issue because women are, are thought to care about the lives of other women and about the moral turpitude or the moral character in general of society at large. So there's a lot you can do with a very uh, concise image if you really take a look at it and mine it for all the different dimensions that it presents. One of the reasons why I think this is the key issue is because, of course, there's also an anti-suffrage movement. And it's not made up of only of men who can't see past the idea that you know, women will be their help meets and, and be there for them when they get home from work. It's also made up of a good number of women a significant portion, especially of upper class women, um, who feel, who agree that women might have to step out of the private sphere into the public sphere, but they want to do so much more carefully. And they're much more circumspect about official roles in the, in the public sphere, particularly the vote. And here's the logic to that. And there is a logic to that. It's not simply a misogynist or deluded or consciousness problem. It's a, it's a logic of the argument of being a social housekeeper and the moral force in society. If your moral character comes from being protected from the public sphere, comes from being solely responsible for the care of children and loved ones in the family unit, then the fear is that if you step too far outside of that, you yourself will be, lose those qualities. Um, so what anti-suffrage women argued is that women should take responsibility for households other than their own, for the community and maybe the city at large, and that there were roles for them to do so. There were professional occupations such as uh, social worker. There were reasons to do that, but that the ballot went too far, and that the ballot put them in the same position as men and might actually erode the special qualities that they brought um, to the question of something like public health. So the public health campaign is central to the progressive era. It becomes central to the tug of war between women over whether or not to support suffrage or not.